Hello and welcome to RobotDo.com. My name is Wilton Reisenhoover and I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on how to uh, use RobotDo to build a, a stock screen. Uh, you would use a stock screen in order to sort through uh, the universe of stocks in order to find companies that might be good buying opportunities. Now this is the RobotDo screener right here and as you can see we've got a, a user interface that is kind of like a query builder where your equation bar is right here and you have terms that you can drag up and build equations with. So your terms are here, market cap, enterprise value, for example, and then you've got categories over here that allow you to go through and, and find the various types of terms that you might want to use in your query. Notice here that we've got balance sheets, cash flow statements, and income statements. Uh, we've licensed all of the financials of all of the companies in the stock market going back 10 years and we allow you to, to build your queries based on these types of detailed financial information. This is a little bit different than a lot of the queries that you can find on the internet today. So to start off, I want to use a, a basic term that a lot of people use in determining, determining valuation, and that's PE ratio. So I can come over here to my PE ratio and I can either click on it, or I can drag it over if I like. Um, or I can simply just start typing P and E and you'll see that we have a little auto completion bar that comes down here. I'll select that. Then I'm going to say I want the P ratio to be say less than 15. And I'm going to hit control enter, or control return or submit, uh, which submits this query. Now this is a little bit more complicated than you would get on a lot of screeners but there's some some power here that you'll see soon enough. Uh, but first I want to look at the results. These are the results of my screen. I can look at PE ratio sorted this way, sorted that way. I can sort by price and so forth and I can go down and kind of dig into the pages down here. Now PE ratio is a pretty good good um, query term and a lot of people use it. It's very popular. But one of the problems with PE ratio is that earnings, uh, earnings can actually be manipulated by management or I should say managed. Um, uh, earnings, of course, is the net income of the company divided by the total shares. And the problem with that is that a company can actually make an accounting income but actually be losing money. Uh, one kind of demonstration of that is to say, let's find, let's find companies that have a net income of greater than zero but actually have a free cash flow of less than zero. Free cash flow is a measure of the amount of cash that's being generated by the company. Uh, and it's really the, the basis for valuations that you want to use uh, rather than net income. So you can see a number of companies here that are actually reporting earnings uh, but are actually losing cash on, on, a, on a pretty substantial basis. These are companies that would show up with a positive PE so they would perhaps show up in your PE ratio query but they're actually losing money. So let's let's revise our initial query here. I'm going to say a PE ratio of less than 15 and I'm going to say a free cash flow greater than zero and see how many companies we have here now. So now we have 741. Okay, well that's that's a little bit better. Um, but there's something else I want to dig into. Um, we're talking about earnings again, you know, we talk about free cash when we talk about earnings. There's, there's, if you look at earnings, earnings is actually made up of a couple pieces here, um, you know, net income. I'm going to take a look at this at this income statement over here as an example. And what we'll see here is that the net income per loss for Echo Brands was $4.9 million in this last quarter. But what you'll find is the operating income for this company was actually $26 million. And that means that the company made $26 million in its day-to-day -day operations. This is the stuff that it does on a regular basis, how it makes money. But spent 19 million dollars on interest expense in the last in the last quarter so you can see that there's some efficiency problems here there's also some other various adjustments down here that affect the total net income but you can see that even though it seems to be throwing off a good amount of of EBITDA which is the operating income it's losing a lot of that in um, uh, in kind of after effects after expenditure so so how do I kind of clear that out well I want to find companies that have uh, a net income of let's say let's just pick an arbitrary amount of at least uh, fifty percent of operating income and so this will show us companies that 
you know, although they might be a little bit inefficient, they're at least going to have 50% of their total no total income is going to be coming from operational income. Um, this might give me a, a kind of a higher quality of company. We can see here that this is 2,900, um, which is surprisingly, you know, less than half of the total number of companies in the database. So let's go back and readjust. We've got net income is greater than 50% of operating income. We have PE ratio of less than 15. We've got free cash flow is greater than zero. And let's see what we have here. So now we have 602 companies. Well, here's a couple of companies that have an operating income of zero. So we we don't want to deal with companies like that, so we can quickly eliminate them by saying operating income is greater than zero. And now let's see what we have. So now we have 383. Okay, well, we're, we're getting somewhere now. Um, one other thing that I like to look at is, is basically return on equity, return on assets. These are kind of similar ratios. Return on assets is generally used for, for companies that have a lot of fixed assets, and so things like manufacturing companies and so forth. Return on equity is used for, for non-manufacturing, and this is basically a measure of how efficient the management is with the assets that, that they're given to manage. One kind of example of this would be if I have, or if you have an investment that might return $10, okay, it's going to have a, a net income or a net return of $10. If I give you $10 to invest and you give me $10 back, that's a return on, on equity of 100%. But if I have to give you $1,000 to get that $10 back, that's a very small return on, on equity. So being able to measure that return on equity is really important. So I want to find companies that have an ROE of at least, let's say, 5%. Okay, let's see what, let's see what we get here. This usually does a pretty good job of narrowing down the landscape uh, because lately companies haven't been very efficient. So now I have 176. I could actually take it a step further and say, uh, let's find companies that aren't too leveraged. And so uh, we talk about current ratio for that. Current ratio is basically the, the total assets divided by the total liabilities. If you find that the companies have, you know, let's say you have $100, but you have $200 in liabilities, uh, that means you're you're kind of behind the curve on your on your um, on your leverage. So we'll say we want a current ratio of at least two. So okay, so this is we've got 85 companies here out of the total stock market. This is a pretty good start for me uh, in in being able to go out and investigate them further. I could go back here and I can make some some more minor changes. I could say let's 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 find companies that have an ROE of 0.1 percent, which would be 10 percent, uh, and I can go back and I can adjust these as necessary. So I feel like I have a pretty good start. Obviously, going through and doing this every day is kind of tedious, and so what I want to do is I want to actually um, save this screen. Come back here and click on save. I'm going to say um, demo screen. This screen attempts to find undervalued yet uh, healthy companies. I can kind of expand that out a little bit here. And I'm going to save that. So it's been saved uh, in my workspace. Now, what does that mean? So let's go over here and take a look at the screens here. Uh, and this is my screens. This is all the screens that I've kind of built for myself. Uh, you can see that the demo screen is down here. I can go look at it which will basically re-execute the screen and show me the numbers. Uh, and you'll see that this is the same results that I saw last time. Uh, and that way I can save a little bit of time in, in, in wanting uh, to come back here each day and, and check my results. I can also subscribe to this screen, uh, which basically puts this in my dashboard. So I'm going to click on subscribe here. Uh, and now the idea is that if I have four or five or, or six screens that I want to look at, on a regular basis. I can put them all in here and I can subscribe to them. And this will show me the uh, uh, all of the stocks that show up in that uh, in each of the screens that I subscribe to. 
And that concludes this little session. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit more about how to create screens and how to use the Robot Doe stock screener. Thank you very much.